most specially, we are Nigerians. So why do we exist? Why do I exist? Over the years, I've grown in business. And in this environment of business, I've been blessed to travel and travel the world. I've touched on every continent, and I've met every shade of black human beings that this earth has provided. All sorts. I've interacted with my race on every continent on earth. And in all my travels, in all my travels, and yet to come across a black race that comes close to what I see in the Nigerian. Yet to see. I've observed, and I observe a lot, but I've observed that we are different in character, different in behavior, different in belief, different in awareness, that we are different in self, that we are different in, different in comportment, and most definitely, we are different in attitude. But while many of us in this room recognize that immediately, you will know a Nigerian anywhere in this world, either they are too loud, or too well-dressed, or too confident, but you will know them. They stand out, sometimes like a sore thumb, but they stand out. But while we understand, while we know that this is the case, we often miss and we don't quite understand why it is the case. And this is my belief. I believe that every race, when God created the human race, and the way that God does, he always will create an example, one that would lead, one that will show the way, one that he will covenant with, and he will use as an example that if you get it right, everyone else in that race will know that this is the way and path to him and to greatness. And every race would have one. I believe that for the Caucasians, that race is embodied in the Jews. I believe that in the Malay race, the Indians carry that. For the Negro race, Nigeria does it. I'm yet to find out for the Native American race, the Indian race, if the Indians of North America or the Incas of South America carry it, but that's for them to discover. It's for them to find out where their covenant lies. Now, from a spiritual perspective, as a result of this covenant, the nations that lead their races would always find themselves the epicenter of persecution. There would always be a concerted effort to destroy, to exterminate. And this is evident through history. The Holocaust, the slave trade epicentered around Nigeria and West Africa. The Chinese at different times. I forgot, sorry. I believe for the Mongolians, the Asians, the Chinese are the ones, but that's my belief. And so you would find that there would be a massacre, a persecution, a willful attempt to exterminate. In North America, you had the native Indians, they exterminated. The people of these nations often find themselves scattered around the world, either displaced by force or through economic difficulties, with a belief that this dispersion will cause them to diminish. But the amazing thing about a covenanted people, the amazing thing about when you have a covenant upon you to lead, is that you would always rise again. You are never permanently crushed. You can be defeated, yes. You can be enslaved. 
You might even be broken, that's true. You may be battered, you may be held down. You can be abused, but you will never be permanently deleted. And all it takes is the kindling of a fire. A recognition of who you are. The understanding that despite everything that you have been through, that you are still standing. And that fills you with a hope that nobody can take away. And every time I think about Nigeria, despite everything that we have been through, despite all that we have been through, there's always a hope that tomorrow will be better. There's always that hope that all it takes is for the right person in government, the right leader to stand. That's all it takes. And everybody believes you have it in you. It's like Samson losing his hair, losing his powers, and then the hair starts to grow. It's never quite lost. It's always there. The right leader, right motivation, and you're back in front leading again. So who can we become? The beautiful thing about the life we live in today and the covenant we carry is that we have a choice. And that choice is a stark one. You can either choose to be known for greatness or you choose to be known for everything that is debasing. The thing about being covenanted is that you will make the news whether you like it or not. People will talk about you whether you want it or not. It's what you carry. It's the light you carry. Once that hand is upon you, they will talk about you. But you have a choice as to whether you want them to speak about greatness or everything negative. Just a week ago, nine people were executed in Indonesia. Nine. From all over the world, nine people. Of the nine, four, four, happen to be Nigerians. They will talk about you. You will be at the epicenter of everything that is happening, good or bad. It's a choice. Four. The Australian president fought, screamed, shouted, tried to visit to save, I think it was one or two Australians. Two. Tried to save two Australians. He did everything. The message he carried wasn't that, did they commit the crime? Yes. Were they going to be executed? Yes. But the message that the Australian president sent to every Australian on earth was that I care about the life of every one Australian. That I have a nation that is behind you and we will defend you. You are first Australian before you are criminal. And likewise, every Australian will defend his nation. They will do what they can to promote and protect it because they know that they have someone behind them. I don't know if the Nigerian president did anything. I didn't hear about it. If he did, I didn't read it. If there was a press conference towards saving the lives of those four, I never saw it. It might have happened, but it was not front and center of our news at all. There are signs everywhere of who we are. In schools all over the world, wherever you have Nigerian students, all over the world, wherever you have Nigerian students, check it, they're at the top of the school, wherever. As scholars, it's said of the black race that Nigerians hold the most degrees, some, two, three, doctorates and all. In the area of business, I've never met, I've never met a more enterprising, maybe outside of the Jews, but for the black race, a more enterprising race than the Igbo race when it comes to business. Everywhere on the continent, everywhere, they go in, they set up shop, and they take over the macroeconomy. Everywhere they've tried to kick them out, they just find out that their economy will collapse, so they leave them. They hold up the economy. When I used to have a lot of time when I traveled, I would go into the local market, 
just to find out what the sense, local market, just a sense of the true economy in the local market.